Hugh Marston Hefner was born on April 9, 1926 in Chicago, Illinois. The elder of two sons of strict Methodist Grace and Glenn Hefner. Hefner attended Sire Elementary School and later Steinmetz High School, where his IQ was 152 despite his average academic achievement. Hefner became president of the student council and created a school newspaper while still in high school, demonstrating his journalistic abilities early on. He also created School Days, a comic book where the usually reserved child could be the center of his own imagined universe. So welcome to my channel, my name is Laura, and today we're going to be diving in to the story behind how Hugh Hefner started Playboy magazine and exploited Marilyn Monroe with Ella Perkinson. In 1952, Hefner worked as a cartoonist for Esquire magazine. He quit his job at the publication after being denied a $5 raise and went out on his own. In 1971, Playboy magazine's monthly circulation reached a high of 7 million editions. Hefner launched Playboy magazine in 1953 with only $600 of his own money and a loan of several thousand dollars from his religious mother. She wrote the check after her husband refused not because she believed in the venture, but because she believed in her kid. The inaugural issue of Playboy, which came out in December of that year, included long-forgotten nude images of Marilyn Monroe from her early career and sold over 50,000 copies. By 1958, the magazine had made a $4 million profit and Hef had become a household name. In 1971, the magazine's monthly circulation reached a high of 7 million copies. Now that we know a little bit about Hugh Hefner and how he started Playboy magazine, let's look into the dark side behind the Playboy empire and how he exploited Marilyn Monroe. Gloria Steinem, a feminist hero, went undercover as a Playboy bunny in 1963 to expose what it is like to work at the Playboy Club in New York City. And here's a rundown of all the surprising disclosures. Hefner kept a watchful eye on the girls who lived in the Playboy mansion. Hefner launched Playboy magazine in 1953 and it quickly became the most popular men's publication, selling 7 million copies per month at its height. Former cover model Charlotte Lewis said that Hugh Hefner's second wife, Kimberly Conrad, wasn't permitted to leave the Playboy Mansion. Charlotte said that after she invited Kimberly over for lunch one day, Kimberly arrived the bodyguard who was constantly on the phone with Mr. Hefner. During this lunch, the bodyguard kept Hugh informed on Kimberly's every move, including when she went to the bathroom and upstairs. That's just like really disturbing. They're basically prisoners in their own house. And when they did leave, they were basically controlled the entire time. Hefner allegedly had his mansion bugged to keep tabs on the girls who lived there. Many former staff and models complained about how he concealed cameras and microphones to watch their every activity on the estate. Stefan Tentenbaum, Hefner's former valet and security guard, recalled having to be extra cautious since we knew we were being watched. Hugh Hefner had copies of everything that happened in the mansion because it was bugged so he could always look back at all the tapes and Hefner used these films of the ladies staying in the house as collateral according to former bunny mummy PJ Maston. So basically they were also terrified to leave because he had all of the stuff and dirt on them with all of these tapes so they're like it's like a double-edged sword and Hugh Hefner had a collection of disposable images of the girls staying in the home according to former model and girlfriend Holly Madison. Holly Madison said that Hefner was continuously shooting images of these women on disposable cameras. And that's really disturbing. And practically all of these women were inebriated. He would print copies of the images and hand them out to everyone who had gone out that night. So if you screw it up, you take a picture of the disposable camera, make a copy and give it to everyone that night to put in a scrapbook. So basically it's like evidence. And that's so creepy. And I noticed that Holly Madison also now has her own YouTube channel and she talks about the Playboy Mansion and what it was like living with Hugh Hefner. And Madison was terrified of leaving Hugh Hefner because of these photos. Crystal Harris, Hefner's third wife, confirmed Madison's story. Crystal said they discovered dozens of those disposable camera images. She says, I instantly pulled them up and destroyed every single one of them. I instantly pulled them up and destroyed every single one of them for you and then numerous other women in them. She wrote in a tweet to Holly Madison, they've vanished. When Hugh Hefner was still alive, several former staffers and models tried to open up and talk about their experiences with Playboy. 
When Hefner found out, he did everything he could to stop them from telling the truth about what actually happened in the Playboy Mansion. And one of Hefner's past lovers, Sandra Theodore, said that things were done to shush people to get them out of the way. From 1976 through to 1981, Theodore dated Hefner. Jennifer Saganor's book, A Playground, A Childhood Lost Inside the Playboy Mansion, was published in 2005. Saganor was the daughter of Mark Saganor, Hugh Hefner's personal physician, and she grew up spending a lot of time at the Playboy home. She stated that after she published her book, Hugh Hefner's crew cancelled all of her promotional appearances saying he didn't want people to know what was really going on. And she says, I understood over time that I was simply one of the many people who had been silenced. And I guess that's what happens when you have all the power and money over all these people. And Vicky Garcia, model and head of promotions from 1973 to 1982, was another person who was silenced after attempting to expose Playboy. She stated that while she was writing a book about her time with Playboy, Hefner had someone pay her off. She was so terrified that she decided to hire a bodyguard. Stefan Tendebaum, Hefner's bodyguard, attempted to publish a book as well, but was intimidated. You're not going to put this book out or we can locate you any place you go, Hefner's staff stated, according to Tenenbaum. You won't be able to hide from us. And Hugh Hefner died in 2017 at the age of 91. He was actually born the same year as Queen Elizabeth and Marilyn Monroe. And he was laid to rest next to Marilyn Monroe in the Hollywood Cemetery. And it's hardly a coincidence though because Hugh Hefner notoriously paid almost $75,000 to buy the crypt next to hers in 1992. Hefner never actually met Marilyn and she may not have been a major admirer of his, so let's jump into how he exploited her. And Hugh Hefner says, I'm a sucker for blondes and she is the ideal blonde, he told CBS LA. It has a sense of completion about it. I'm going to spend the rest of my life with Marilyn and I'm pretty sure Marilyn Monroe is not happy about you spending the rest of your life with her. Marilyn probably wasn't overjoyed with the prospect of being laid next to Hugh Hefner, someone who used her nudity to launch his empire. I honestly had no idea this happened and then I started researching it and I was like, I have to share this because I'm a huge Marilyn fan and I've done so many videos about her and I was just shocked. Marilyn was first Norma Jean Baker, a struggling actress who posed nude for a photographer Tom Keeley out of desperation. Later in life, she would become the ultimate blonde and a typical Hollywood icon. So obviously these things end up haunting you later in life and obviously she didn't think this would happen. Marilyn was reportedly so ashamed by the photos that she signed release forms as Mona Monroe, believing they would not come back to haunt her later in life. You must pledge to never tell anyone about my posing for you in the nude, she reportedly informed the photographer at the time. I'd like you to guarantee me that you'll snap the photos in such a way that I won't be able to recognize myself in them. And that photo shoot netted Marilyn Monroe $50 and Hugh Hefner obtained those images from a calendar firm years later and released them in 1953 in the inaugural issue of Playboy without her permission. And he made a $500 payment for these photos and I'm shocked that this can happen. I guess the photos were released to this calendar and then he was able to buy them without her consent. I feel like, I don't know if nowadays if this happened, could you sue Playboy magazine? I just feel like, I don't know how this happened, how we, and I'm honestly, because Marilyn Monroe was so famous, he basically launched his magazine like on the coattails of someone else's fame and success. And that is why Playboy was an instant hit selling nearly 50,000 copies because everyone wanted to see the nude photos of Marilyn Monroe. And Marilyn says, I've never even received a thank you from all of those who made millions off my nude photos. And she stated this in her book, Marilyn, Her Life in Her Own Words. She says, to see myself in the magazine, I had to purchase my own copy. Well, everything worked out in the end for Marilyn Monroe, I guess, but she had no control over her naked visions for a horrifying period of time. She may have agreed to a picture shoot with a photographer, but she did not agree for her images to be plastered in Playboy magazine to hundreds of thousands of people. And it's still a nightmare for many females today. I mean, even if you look at the Pamela Anderson sex tape with Tommy Lee, basically that was stolen and leaked. Um, without her consent and she had no choice and people were making uh, millions of dollars off this. So it's kind of a similar situation and Marilyn Monroe confessed in her biography that Hefner's actions nearly put an end to her career as 
because obviously even nowadays being in Playboy is kind of less taboo, but back then, I mean, this was a big deal in the 1950s. She says, I admitted it was me that appeared for the nude calendar, even when Fox executives were anxious and feared this would jeopardize any future films I would have been featured in, as well as my cinematic career, she claimed. Hugh Hefner would go on to sell over 7 million copies a month at the height of his success, hold parties at the legendary Playboy Mansion in LA, and build a multi-million dollar business based on a desperate woman's photo shoot. And since I do kind of believe in the afterlife, I feel that Marilyn Monroe knows that Hugh Hefner is now next to her, and she is most likely probably very unhappy with it. I'm a believer in things metaphorical, he told the LA Times. It, it's impossible to say no to spending an eternity with Marilyn. We'll never know her thoughts on the subject, but I mean, I don't know. I just have a suspicion Marilyn Monroe has unfinished business and she, I don't know. I just feel like she's still with us in some ways and I feel like she's probably not too happy about it. If I ever go back to LA, hopefully in the near future, I will definitely pay a visit to her grave because I've been to Hollywood before. I haven't been back since 2009, but I regret not actually going to see her grave. So let me know in the comments below. Have you been there? Did you know the story about Marilyn and Playboy? And thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe and thank you all my new members who have joined my channel. Alright, I'll see you guys again. Bye!